Hello, thank you for joining the Lazaridi School for our Beyond the Degree series. My name is Graham McCormick and I'm the Corporate Engagement Officer for the Lazaridi School of Business and Economics at Wilfrid Laurier University and a BBA alumnus from 2011. Today we're joined by Carolyn Wilkins, an alumnus of the Bachelors of Arts and Economics program, class of 1987. Carolyn had a distinguished 20 year career at the Bank of Canada, most recently serving as Senior Deputy Governor from 2014 to 2020. Since leaving the bank, Carolyn has been appointed to the Bank of England's Financial Policy Committee as an external member. She also sits on the board of directors of Intact Financial Corporation, the largest provider of property and casualty insurance in Canada, and has just recently been appointed to Princeton as a senior research scholar starting in January. Carolyn, thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure, Graham. To get things going, you did your bachelor's degree in economics at the Lazaridi School. Why did you choose Laurier and, and what drew you to study economics? Well, that was a long time ago, almost 100 years. Um, well, let me start first with the subject. I, I'd always been interested, especially in high school, with, with people's behavior. Uh, why, do they, why do they choose the jobs they choose? Why do they save versus spend? Uh, it's a strange thing for a teenager to think about, but around me, there were people from all walks of life and they all had different experiences. And I found that economics was a really fantastic way to marry the social side, uh, the social science side with um, what I would call the rigor of, of mathematics, of, of models, of science, where, where you could really study this behavior and how it all came together to the economy. And I also knew just from the conversations that, that my family was having around the dinner table that economics was a way to understand a lot of the public policy questions that are still top of mind for people, whether it's got to do with tax, it's got to do with how to solve the problem with respect to income inequality. Economics is a, is a fantastic tool for that. So I was drawn and Laurier is such a great school because I come from a small town. Um, there might be about 15 people in my town. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Laurie at the time wasn't uh, a big school, but they had a really well-developed program in economics that included a cooperative option. So I was be able to, uh, to, to get into that option and, and of course uh, work throughout, uh, throughout my degree. You know, I think your point of, you know, those conversations around the dinner table and where you grew up and, you know, how economics can tie back to every faucet of some of those lives, you know, is, is a really interesting thing for, you know, a high school student to be so self-reflective on. Um, you know, following your bachelor's degree at Laurier at the Lazaridi School, you completed your master's in economics. How do you think your time in the Lazaridi School prepared you for your graduate studies? It was just the perfect uh, stepping stone to do to do my master's because um, the courses in economics were were um, varied, but they were all technical enough. As soon as you get to uh, a master's program, you're going to be called on to use techniques that require a foundation, for example, in mathematics. And uh, but at the same time, um, you're going to learn a wide range of, of economic approaches and, and a wide range of applications to different kinds of public policy, whether it's banking or labor markets or environmental studies. And so the options that I was able to take at Laurier were in terms of the courses were, were just fantastic preparation. It's, a, it's got a great reputation as a school. And so, and so my application was viewed um, positively from that regard. And, and I would have to say uh, that, the, that the encouragement uh, and the time that the professors took with me uh, to, to explain to me just what the value would be to get a master's and to give me the confidence that in fact, you know, I'd be a good student, I would do well at that, um, I think was really important for me to decide that I was going to continue my education doing a master's rather than going directly to the workforce. You know, I, I think your point about, you know, the encouragement from faculty, you know, that is you know, still very much the culture that I see amongst our students today. And, you know, even with our own, um, you know, master's of economics program, you know, they really try and help guide the students. 
Now, you know, prior to joining the bank, you held, uh, you know, senior land, uh, senior, senior analytical roles related to economic forecasting and uh, fiscal policy development at both the Department of Finance and the Privy Council office. What was that experience like as a young economist? And what advice do you have for someone who's looking at a career in the public sector? So my very first job, um, I think it was the proudest moment of my life when I got um, when I got my first job, I got the offer from the Department of Finance to join their fiscal policy division. And I was absolutely thrilled because during my time for doing co-op, I had worked at the Ontario Treasury. And so the job offer I got was the federal government's treasury. And I was going to do um, fiscal policy analysis, how to do budgets, what were the integral policies for the federal government and their relationship with the provincial governments. And I knew that, that what I had learned at school, either at, at Laurier or Western, was going to be very helpful, but I would never stop having to learn in these positions. And so what was it like? Um, a bit like drinking from a fire hose at the beginning. Certainly my co-op experiences prepared me for what it would be like in the workplace, uh, but the subject matter often was new. And so the thrill of having to learn things, uh, new things uh, and, and respond to different situations was just incredible. Um, I had the opportunity to go to the Privy Council office and work for what then was like the chief economist of the Privy Council under three different prime ministers. That was the tail end of Brian Mulroney. Uh, then there was Kim Campbell. And then after that, it was Jean Chrétien. <clears throat> and maybe some of the people watching this won't remember this because they weren't even born, but the 90s were just a, an incredible time for the economy where, where the Canadian government was hitting a debt wall. Um, Foreign investors were very worried about the level of indebtedness. Uh, the Bank of Canada had just adopted an inflation targeting agreement. Uh, they had signed a free trade agreement. Uh, and there were just a number of, of uh, financial crises around the world, uh, Mexican peso crises, uh, being one of them kind of peppered along those, those years in the 90s. And so to be in, in rooms, the cabinet meeting, for example, or with senior um, ministers uh, listening to, to um, what they had to say about public policy was just a great uh, way to, to start my career. You know, I couldn't even imagine what that was like and the opportunities and, and the learning, you know, as you mentioned, you know, for a, for a job out of school is invaluable, um, I'm sure. Now, you know, during the 2008 financial crisis, you were the deputy managing director of the financial markets department. What lessons did you take from that experience that assisted you in developing the bank's um, liquidity facilities um, and the large asset purchase program as part of the COVID-19 response? Wow, that 2008, 2009 experience was incredible. The financial system globally, uh, especially in the US and in Europe was under extreme strain uh, in Canada, we were pretty lucky because the banks were in fantastic shape. And so we were really hit with the tail of the crisis rather than being at the epicenter of it. And, and so what the Bank of Canada needed to do and what I needed to do in my job was find ways to ease the pressures that were happening in financial markets uh, through developing new uh, liquidity tools. And that's just a fancy way of saying finding ways to get money, cash into the hands of financial institutions who needed them to conduct their, their daily transactions when the markets weren't working that well. And, you know, I would say um, this is a lesson that I learned personally that I think applies to, to the students, which is don't be afraid to, to think up new things and to try to float new ideas. But I, because I can tell you, we were innovating as a central bank at that time. Um, don't ever think that you should work on something alone when you know that there's a group of people, a team, either in, in the public sector or in the private sector within your financial institution, if that's where you're working, who you absolutely need to consult and bounce ideas off. Uh, one of my early lessons was that 
Never try to create something new without talking to the lawyers <laughs> and the operational people that uh, actually know how things work as opposed to me as an economist who has it all in my head. Um, and I think just for the financial system more, more broadly, um, we really have to have the guts to learn from our mistakes. And so that's what I spent the years after the crisis doing was looking back with my colleagues, both domestically and internationally, what went wrong and how can we fix the regulation of the financial system? How can we encourage private sector participants in the financial system to manage their own risks better so that this doesn't happen again? And certainly when COVID hit this time, we had to step in central banks, not only in Canada, but around the world. But the problems weren't the same. And the system, given what it was facing, was much more resilient than it was um, 10, 15 years ago. And that's because we had the guts to make the regulatory changes and the private sector had the, the courage to face their investors and their shareholders and say, you know what, we also need to shore up our, our risk management too. And that put us in much better stead. I still think we have some lessons to learn, but certainly, um, but certainly, uh, I think that the changes that we made at the international level were really helpful in helping the financial system face the crisis that we're we're living right now with the pandemic. You know what an interesting, you know, thing to be a part of and to live through and help you know work on. You know, for me and I think you to the students, you know, you 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 nailed it there with. Uh, you know, no one is smarter than the team. And, you know, I, I know, you know, at Lazaridis and at Laurier, a lot of the work they do is team-based, right? It's group work and, you know, relying on those other people, you know, be it the partners in your, in the firm you're working at or on your, um, in your, in your classmates, it's, it's invaluable. Now, as a senior deputy governor, you were the bank's G20 and G7 deputy, and you represented Canada on a number of international advisory boards. The Lazaridi School has a long history of attracting students from rural Ontario and first-generation Canadians. For someone who grew up, as you mentioned, you know, um, with an RR address outside of Peterborough, what advice do you have for students who are thinking about careers with multinational companies with offices around the world or, or looking at opportunities in some of the major international businesses? Mm -hmm. yeah, you bring me back the, the first time I... I um unpacked my suitcase in, in Kitchener Waterloo, uh, I realized there was a, a Japanese restaurant and, uh, and I went there with a, a friend, uh, a new friend actually, um, and had sushi for the very first time in my life. And I'm 19 years old, if you can imagine. Um, that's almost unheard of for many people who, who, uh, who live in the city uh, and are fortunate enough to be able to go out for dinner. So, so or order in. Um, you know, the, the highlight I would say uh, of um, my time at the bank was really uh, the interactions that I had with other regulators, either domestically or internationally. And the reason it was a highlight for me was because our work was to attack or assess really hard uh, problems that were that we shared. Um, you know, most I, I spoke about the, the regulatory reforms post crisis. Well, I led uh, with a, another colleague from the US and then from France, the the first Basel III liquidity regulations working group. And so we built those from the ground up. Liquidity regulations didn't exist before. And, and what was it like? There were 49 people from different countries around the table, all with different perspectives, all really smart. And, and, uh, and we ended up getting the job done. And it took a lot of hard work. And, you know, most recently, uh, you know, I was working with uh, with colleagues in the G7 on uh, cryptocurrencies and the issue of stable coins and of central bank digital currencies, which is a pretty hot topic these days. And again, um, I would say that that the lessons I learned from that that I, I think are relevant to to the students is really um, that that apart from the obvious, where you have to really know your stuff and you need to bring substance to the table. Success of those international um, engagements really relies on, on a couple of things and really simple one, 
our relationships. And we may think that we can do everything, uh, we can do everything by email, um, but to really get a trusting relationship with people around the world, it takes personal contact and relationships. Um, takes maybe even learning another language. Uh, I learned French. Um, I'm trying to learn Spanish uh, to try to meet people in their own in their own terms. Um, but I can tell you that that all those efforts are extremely worth it um, because they're just so satisfying to feel like you're one world and you're working towards the common good. I'm just I'm looking at the clock and I'm noticing we're almost out of time. I have one last question. During the time at the bank, you helped create a master's scholarship award uh, for women in economics and finance that upon graduating included an offer of employment and access to mentorship by a bank employee. What advice would you have for other organizations and leaders who are looking to build similar programs to target underrepresented groups in the fields of economics and finance? That was just such a highlight for, for me and my colleagues when we, when we put this together. We also have a scholarship for Indigenous uh, people, people uh, in minority groups, as well as, as, well as um, a scholarship for disabled people. And when we decided to do this, um, we were wondering, well, how can we create opportunities for people uh, to just take that extra step, whether whether it's a, an undergrad degree in economics and finance or a graduate degree in economics and finance, so that they can enter a world that maybe they would never feel was accessible to them. And, and uh, you know, my advice is don't overthink it. Just be bold and create a program. And so you, you help three or five or 10 people a year, it creates, it creates, within those communities and understanding of what economics is. What is it like to work at a central bank? It's more exciting than it, than it looks like from the outside, I can tell you. And slowly, and I think over time, what it'll do is it will just normalize um, people from those groups, whether women or, or disadvantaged groups, um, indigenous people, it just creates an understanding that, yeah, we can be part of this world too. You know, what's in it for the bank? What I thought when I was senior deputy governor is it would be a way for us to get different perspectives at the table, to understand what were the barriers, um, how, do, how do different people see the problems with the, that we're looking at, what are the answers that they would come up with? And certainly um, I can tell you, my colleagues would agree that that, that investment is paying off. No, Carolyn, thank you for sharing your insights and experience today. I know it'll be of great value to everyone in the Lazaridi School and Laurier community. Thank you again for watching Beyond the Degree, featuring Carolyn Wilkins, a graduate of the Lazaridi School's economics program. It was a pleasure.